Howdy folks, Dave Yalk here, and today uh, I've got uh, Miss Dakota, a quarter horse, and uh, what I want to show you today is how to teach the horse the pick-me-up cue, which means uh, bring your stirrup to me wherever I am, and I use it when you need to mount uh, taller horses from a mounting block or whatever, and I also use it to correct horses that have problems standing still for mounting. Although I always want to ask the question, why are they moving when you go to mount them? Sometimes their back hurts or there's other problems. Sometimes it's the rider poking them in the go forward cue with their toe as they're mounting. So there's other reasons, but uh, generally I use this cue for a couple of things. The most common one is the horse is too tall to mount from the ground. Uh, and uh, in this case, um, the owner, Adrian here, wanted me to teach his horse this. And I've had lots of requests from folks. I've, I've got videos out there showing me using this, but not showing me teaching this. So that's what we're going to do today. Oops. Switch helmet. Well, now nah, that's okay. You know what I do for myself? No. <laughs> um, oh, you can come out, Adrian. Unless, well, if you want to be in here, that's no, okay. Just, oh, okay. I'll swap her out for you. Yeah, close that for me. Ah, 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 ah. Oh. So it's always best if you use this with a horse with a bit in its mouth um, because part of, there's a transitory period at the beginning i'm going to teach her a very specific cue that says when i do this i want you to bring the hip to me the idea is more or less to turn on the forehand where the front feet stay stationary and the back end swings into you to bring you the stirrup right here um, so at first it's going to be a cue but there's also because i'm going to take a hold of the reins here there gets to be a sensation on the bit that when my hand touches the bit in a certain way the horse is going to know that's the feel where I should bring him the stirrup. Then the third transition period is when the horse knows if you climb up on something, they should bring themselves to you. And that gets really cool because you can just turn around, climb up anything. And by the time you turn around, your horse is already parked with the stirrup in the perfect mounting position. So it's a really great thing to teach. And uh, you might be able to see this taught different places in different ways. Um, uh, I was taught this in a different way. Uh, using a flag sitting on top of the round pen and tapping the opposite side of the hip to come to you and that you're actually teaching them the feel on the bit eventually to come to you because you're just not going to sit up on a round pen with a whip. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to do anything. Ask a thousand trainers how to do something you get a thousand answers. So what I want to start out doing is I want to give the horse less options. I'm going to put it, park them along an immovable object, and I'm going to tell them to move in the cue spot. And the cue spot is right between the hips, right there. When I stimulate that spot in the future, I want this hip coming, swinging toward me, right there. So I'm going to touch that with this whip, and I want this to be very specific cue, because if I touch the horse here, it means go forward on the ground, okay? So I, I don't want to confuse these two points. So I'm also going to be raising my hand straight up in the air. This, this is a transition cue from the whip to my, just my hand without the whip. But I'm going to cant my hand so that a, a line coming perpendicular to the plane of my hand is going to point at that cue spot. So I'm going to cant my hand down like that. I'm going to raise my hand straight up overhead and cant my hand down. You'll see that as a transition cue. So... I'm going to ask her to move by stimulating her up there, tapping her twice. I also have a unique verbal cue, a double kiss. That only means one thing. It means bring me the stirrup. I never double kiss for any time except for that. Okay. By standing here, I'm going to tell her to move. She can't go to her right. My hand's going to be on the bit. I'm not going to let her go forward. I'm also not going to let her go back with my hand on the bit. But I'm going to tell her to move. This is really, this is a perfect example of make the right thing easy for your horse and the wrong thing hard or impossible. There's only one way she can move. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stare at this foot right there. What I want is this foot to step sideways. At first, leaning that hip, 
that direction might be enough, and I'm going to give her a release and quit asking. Any attempt to move that hip in the beginning is going to have me quit to tell her, yes, dear, that's exactly what I want you to do. So here we go. My hand goes on the reins. My hand's going to go up in the air. Double kiss and move, please. Double tap, hand up in the air. Double tap, hand up in the air. How hard you tap here. At first, you can always exaggerate cues. She wants to move now because I'm telling her to move. She's moved, tried to move forward. She tried to move in toward the gate. And now, now she's moving forward. And she got really worried on that one. And that's okay. Eventually, if you look back at the video, that left front foot moved toward me. Now, in some cases, if you're really aggressive, it might be to kick you in the face. <laughs> Try not to be aggressive, but in my learning tree, I've got four steps. Get it, get it bigger, then get it softly. So at the beginning, when you're trying to teach a horse something and they don't understand, sometimes you want to exaggerate. You need to exaggerate to help the horse understand this is, you know, I need you to try something. In the beginning, she wasn't trying anything. So I have to convince her, try something. And there's a lot of ways to do everything. Now, she has no idea yet which of the feet she's moving that's causing me to stop. That's okay. I'm just going to focus on that left front foot. It took one step sideways. That's good enough. One of the basic tenets of the way I work is the horse doesn't learn when you're doing and it's doing. The horse learns when you quit right now. This is when she's digesting the experience and when the stimulus, response, release gets learned, not just observed. I want this to be embedded in her brain. If you don't quit, put it this way, you can, they will learn if you don't quit. They learn a lot faster when you take the time to quit in between things and let them digest and absorb the experience. It massively increases the frequency of the response by letting them calm, be calm and relaxed and thoughtful. If your horse is emotional, it can't learn. No one can learn when they've got too much anxiety or stress. So we're going to try it again. She did not lick and chew. I would have preferred to lick and chew, but I've noticed already with the little I've worked with this horse that she does not like to lick and chew and relax into things. I'm going to give her a mini break. That's not what I wanted to happen. She simply moved that left foot forward. But she did just now lick and chew on the quit. And she was struggling. She was really tense and almost stuck. So I looked for a place that at least you move the correct leg, not in the direction I want. Sometimes you have to look for a place to help the horse out. That's what I did right there.
I gave her a mini hint right there by actually bending her neck away from me slightly, which, which should stimulate the hip to move. Um, she appreciated that hint. One of the things I've noticed about her is when you add pressure to this horse, she has a tendency to go into a happy place. And f for a while there, she zoned out. I'm trying to show her something, teach her a new, introduce something new to her, and the pressure I was putting on her caused her to zone out. Um, from her perspective, this is too much active leadership. And it's one of the reasons I'm going passive right now. I need to help her respond to even when there's pressure on her. We should all learn to be able to perform under pressure. After all, if you ever want to compete in anything, competition creates pressure. If you want to win at anything, you've got to be able to perform under pressure. Good. I can see how t difficult this is for you. You're okay. Good, 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 good. So right now her legs are screwed up to the point where it's actually going to be difficult for her to move. There she's better. She should be able to do it now. Good. Good. So as an FYI, um, this horse is harder to teach this to off the bat than 85% of horses I've taught it to. I've also been pretty lucky the last two horses I taught it to. The first one learned it in about 30 seconds. It was like, gee, Leo, what are you, genius? He goes, yep. And then the second guy, Danny, most recently, took him about three or four minutes. So I've been spoiled lately. You can see what she's doing with her right front foot. That's tension and anxiety. She does not have a good response to, to pressure. It causes her a lot of anxiety. So we got to help her with that. It's our job to help her. Good. 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 There you go. I can see this is hard for you. We'll make it easier. I always want to pet out an area that I'm putting pressure on. This can cause a lot of tension everywhere in her and, and she's having a, a bad response to the pressure a lot of anxiety and tension that is not conducive to learning and a tense body is not a body that can perform well so I want to help her relax into her school 
into her classroom and teaching. Good, 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 good. So good, girl. I should also mention in here, I try to mention this on all my videos, if you're teaching and working with your horse, there's five steps to learning with horses. Each different species and even people, individuals within a species might have different ways of learning. But generally, horses have five phases of learning. First one is I got it. The second one is I don't have it. I don't understand it anymore. The third one is I have it again. The fourth one is, I have no idea what you want, and I hate you. <laughs> and the fifth one is, oh, I completely understand it, and I know it the rest of my life. So phases two and four in there are regression when it comes to behavior and learning. You've taught something in phase one, and 80% of the time they're doing what you ask. She's almost in phase one now. Okay, well, then comes phase two, where the behavior deteriorates. You make the cue the same, and it doesn't happen. Don't get frustrated, don't get angry, repeat. Go back, matter of fact, it is always good to go back to the foundation used to create the behavior in phase one of learning, okay? So it, the horse has to go into regression, phase two, to get to phase three, which is positive behavior again. And they have to go through four, phase four, which is I hate you, I'm never gonna do anything for you, <laughs> before they get to phase five total learning. Don't take it personally. Don't get frustrated or angry with your horse. They're learning. They have to go through phase two and four to learn the task. It's natural and normal. So accept it. And you can see as we progress, there's a lot less tension and anxiety going on with her. At the beginning, she was all, ah! So it's up to us to help her be like this so she can learn. And, and we develop this by throwing passive leadership in after the active leadership and letting and quitting what we're doing to give her the time to digest the experience. Yes! Now she stepped into me with the front foot first. That's okay. It's not ideal because if you're standing on a mounting block, you probably already, you know, put her close enough. And there's some cautionaries. When you get to the mounting block, I'll actually raise my knee up to tell the horse that's close enough on that end. Otherwise, they can keep coming into you and knock you right off the mounting block. So you always got to give your horse feedback of that's as much as I want. I don't want any more. I've had some horses that they just keep coming into you. Well... There you go. There you go. So it's important. You can see she's up against my chest now. It's important that I don't take a step back. If I take a step back, she could keep coming. I need to block her and say, that's enough. And I could pick up my knee, but at this point, I don't, I'm not going to do that yet. And she did a little tiny lick and chew. There you go. Good, good. There's a lick and chew. So that one, and this might, she could be even in phase two already, hard to say. Um, 
she started to come into me with a front end, and that's not what I'm looking for. But she's not exactly sure what I want. You know, she knows I want the back end, but she doesn't know if that's all I want or not. So she tried something there and kind of ran into me with her shoulder. And I just kind of closed myself under her and say, no, nope, that's not what I want. And I made a verbal cue to tell her, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. And she stopped the front end, and she brought the back end. So that's all good stuff. What the heck was that? <laughs> Are you okay? There you go. There's another component that's going on right now, and that is the make your cue and wait. What are we waiting for? Thoughtful stuff to go through her brain like, what's Master want me to do? I don't quite understand, but he wants me to do something. What, what does he want me? Oh, I think he wants me to dot, 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 dot. Let me see if this is what he wants. Okay, so there's a period of time that takes for all that stuff to happen in the brain. You want to give the horse time to go through that in the brain, to think that process through. That's a responsive horse versus a reactive horse where you double kiss right there. They're all up in the air, full of anxiety and try dancing and it works and you just throw a bunch of stress at them and they have no idea what they're doing and now they're reactionary. We don't want that. We want a responsive horse that's asking the question, what does he want me to do? Let me try this. And as soon as they do it, you quit. So things are happening. She, she's stuck somewhere in the learning process. But she is learning. There are times I feel like she's going to do it on my double kiss. She thinks about it. And last time I waited and nothing happened. So I tapped her with the whip. So she's starting to think about the double kiss which is nice, like right there, and there, and there it happened, there it happened, I knew it was going to happen, good girl, yes, good girl, now somewhere in here you want to take it to the mounting block, um, this might be a little early, because what happens at the mounting block is you start tapping them and the hip starts going away. A better idea is to bring the mounting block to the horse. And I, and I do this particularly with un, un, uh, broke horses because they also need to get used to me standing above them on a mounting block and be calm and relaxed. So it's always good to bring the mounting block to the horse the first time around before you go out in the middle of nowhere and set both of you up to fail. So we're going to go ahead and ask Miss Dakota to line up, back against the rail, there we go, and so I'm going to go ahead and get on this here mounting block for the first time, and do exactly what I've been doing on the ground, that's okay, and with me here, she wants to interact with me, so I'm going to respond to that, and what it gets me is a lick and chew by me taking a moment out and having a conversation with her. She initiated this conversation and she said, hey, talk to me. So this is never wrong to take a time out and tell the horse you heard them so we can actually have conversations instead of one-way uh, commands. So here we go. Good, 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 and you found some grass, <laughs> yeah, okay, we're not grazing, I'm going to ask her to back a step,
finish that. Oh. She set herself up to step and then quit. And there goes her right foot. Oh, it might be flies. Could be flies. Now, I got to look at this. I could leave her where she is and ask for that second step, which is going to line me up almost perfectly for mounting. Or I can reset her and ask for that first step. Well, I'm going to move this slightly like that. And then, oops. And then I'm going to ask her to take that and take one more step into me. Because theoretically, we're not quite close enough to mount. And I know I'm not mounting right now. And the reason is I'm trying to get this behavior learned. If I were to mount, it's kind of punishment. Does a, really, does a horse really want to bear your weight? Not really. I mean, maybe, but, you know, definitely mounting a horse is not a reward. So I'm trying to produce something here. And I need to reposition her because she's already in a perfect mounting place. Okay, right there, she just did three steps in a row, four steps, to put herself in a perfect place. Doesn't get better than that. <laughs> eh, it's not perfect. <laughs> but that was pretty darn good effort. Now the bad news is she could be in phase three. It kind of feels that way to me. That she's in phase three of this and she's not through all five phases. So she's going to go through a regression stage. And what do you do? You just go back, put her against the fence. And you could even work on take a step back, take a step forward, take a step back, take a step forward. Now take a step into me. And it'll get to the point where as soon as you walk up here, she'll just bring you the hip. And we're going to do a little walk, off, walk it off break between repetitions. Never wrong to take a little mental break or recess from school. She's licking and chewing. So she's, I'm helping her digest while she's doing this. Very nice. And we're going to try that one more time. Good girl. What I'm going to do is stand up here and focus on her cue spot and, and ask her, what do you think I want? That is perfect. Then you can see the delay between my requests and her response. Don't be in a big hurry. Let the horse go through the decision-making process and then give them feedback on their decision. My, me petting her butt is my feedback saying, very nice job right there.
And she had a tiny, tiny lick and chew at the end. You want to try this, Adrian? Sure. You've seen everything. Any questions? Um, yeah, I think the, the big thing I just saw there was the uh, delay. Yes, you got to wait for it. Um, there's another piece that I can't describe. There's always a feeling with my hand on the bit that I mentioned at the beginning. And in, in her case, I was actually m pushing her head a little bit away from me as I'm holding her. Okay. By bending her head away from me like that, it encourages the hip to move into Okay. Uh, the, that, the, mo the most likely place for that hip to go when that hip head is bent that way is, is into me the way I want. So I found that that little hint right there helped her when she was stuck. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and uh, reposition her. And first thing we're going to do is without the mining block. And put her, put her up against the fence. I guess I should get out of the camera <laughs> way. Now, now flip your fingers over so your little fingers closest to the bit. Yep, there you go. Quit, quit. Okay, so you gotta be careful to not step back right there. She doesn't know when to stop yet. She has no idea. She says, you want me to come into you, I'm coming into you. That was perfect. So you just, you got to stand your ground and maybe even bump her with your chest. Or when I'm on the mining block, I raise my knee. It runs right into their shoulder at the perfect place. And that's the old, don't knock me off the mining block. Yeah, okay. um, so she was so good on that response. It was almost too much. Is there such a thing as too much? Nope. That was wonderful. Hey, oh. you flip your hand over. Or no, you've got it right. Never mind. Perfect. Drop everything. You want to try and release faster. Yeah. Yeah. You held it up. She's all there. She's done moving and your, your cue is still there. Good for her, man. Keep moving. Yes, exactly. Good girl. Good girl. Wow. Uh, I, I'm going to just throw this at you. You know, she doesn't know me at all. There's no relationship here. But her doing it more willingly for you says something about the relationship there. That was so quick and easy for her. She, she knows you, and she wants to do what you want or what you tell her to do. So that's a beautiful thing. You want to try it on the mountain block? Sure. Okay, reposit well, grab the mounting block, reposition her. So you want you don't want to put her in the mounting position, you want to put her away far enough away she's got to move to you. And of course then we have to take her away from the fence line. Uh, like right now, if you take her out into the middle of nowhere, it might not work. You can try it if you want. Go for it. Here? Sure! <laughs> don't bring her into you. There you go. Don't let her move forward. Quit. It's just important that the left hand dare. Perfect. Pet, 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 pet. Good girl. Good girl. Pet rump, pet rump. Good girl. It's, the important one is to not let her go forward with your left hand. And she will get this odd feeling from you that's hard for her or me to describe that your hand is holding in a special way because your brain is thinking you want her to come into you. She will begin to feel that special way. And as soon as you put your hand on there with the thought that she comes in, she'll start moving with no whip, no hand in the air, no nothing. So you just got to be ready for that. And then after that, as you're climbing up something, she'll be positioning herself. <laughs> That's the coolest thing ever. Ever. Good. I love that. No, don't go closer. Pull her away. Come on, man. <laughs> don't make it easy. Quit. There you go. Pet, pet, pet. Pet rump, pet rump. Good girl. Good girl. 
Okay, so to me that looks like it's in perfect place to mount too. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, that was so quick I didn't have time to move the... Uh... She almost started to do it when you climbed up there, and then I could see it fall apart in her brain. And then as soon as you raised the whip, before you even kissed, she was moving. I think. That was, it was really cool. Very nice. Let's try that again. This is very exciting. It is. Because it, it looked very difficult for her at first. Yeah. The beginning was almost the most difficult I've had with a horse. She was pretty badly stuck mentally. Don't let her step forward. There you go. Now wait, wait, just wait. Okay, ask, ask for one more step. There you go. So if, she, if she's not through learning, if she's not through all the phases, there might come a time, there might come a time where you might have to tap her again on the hip, on the top of the rump. Yeah, right now, when you raise your hand and double kiss, she's responding. Uh -huh. Okay, if she's in phase three, the next learning phase in phase four, she's going to stop doing this. She's just going to stand there. So you're going to have to go back to double tapping. And she might even actually move the hip away. Mm -hmm. Weird things happen in phase four. Okay. Okay. If all of that stuff happens, just go to a fence that blocks her in one direction the way I started and start at the start. On the ground, you know, get it working again. And that will get her into phase five. Sounds good. Sounds good. Want to try one more time? <laughs> just to... Absolutely. Solidify this thing a little. That was really nice. So she tried to tell me I'm not that smart at the beginning, but it was it had nothing to do with intelligence. It had everything to do with her feelings, her emotions. Her anxiety was so high, and me tapping her, she actually uh, zoned out for a while, and then the anxiety made it worse. But once she calms herself down, brilliant. Just wait, just wait there. Let her there. Okay, go ahead, ask again. There you go. So it was so important to hold that left hand there, right? Otherwise, she'll walk forward out of that. If you don't let her walk forward, then the hip will come right into you and you can get on. Good girl. It, what we didn't do, we should be finishing this with actual mounting. But it's always a good thing when you're teaching them to just isolate the behavior from the eventual mounting. So, you know, good homework. Yeah. Practice this at home and actually conclude it with the mounting. Okay. Do you have a dressage whip at home? Or something? Yeah, yeah, I have a couple of these, yeah. Just like okay, this. perfect. Okay, did you want to, you're out of time? Yeah, we're. You got to go, okay. And the phone call is Oh, Danny. oh, okay. No problem. Understand. <laughs> but that was very, very nice. I was worried at the beginning. Alrighty, folks. Have a great day. And uh, like I said, that might have been the, the worst case or hardest case of uh, most any horse I've, I've tried to teach that to. I shouldn't say tried, but did teach that to. It should go a lot easier for you. Um, usually on average, it takes a horse to completely learn this, uh, all the way through everything in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and it's been almost 40. So, uh, but good luck folks. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome to contact me. Uh, actually I don't read comments and YouTube videos very often, but if you look, if you look for me, I've got a website, davidyelk.com with an email address and whatnot. Uh, you can, you're always welcome to call and I think my phone number is on my Facebook page. You can text or call or whatever you want to do, email. Happy to answer your questions. Good luck, folks. Have a blessed day.